Okay, hi, I'm Kyung Sung, and the leader of this image deep learning team. Let's start our team's presentation. The image deep learning is a very clear task. Even a blurry input image, like this one, we want to get the sharp deep learning results, like this one. For this test, we use the existing GoPro dataset. And we try to solve this problem by using the generative diffusion process. It consists of two different steps. Let me explain the rough idea. Given the very clear image, by adding noise at each four steps, we can make this image to almost pure noise. And by reversing, approximating the reversing steps, we can generate the clear image from the pure noise reversely. It's also well known as diffusion model. Then why did we choose the diffusion model for this task? Firstly, it has already shown its competitive performance in super resolution and image denoising task. And secondly, the diffusion model can be trained without any task specific design. The existing deep learning models train the model with additional task specific loss, but it can make the training more unstable and even requires much more experiment for model tuning. Therefore, we try to find out whether the diffusion model without any task specific design with just the conditional input is still suitable for image deep learning task as well. In the image deep learning, uh, Im image classification task, it is known that the difference between the train and test image resolution have impact on the trained model's performance. There was a research regarding this called train test resolution discrepancy. And this idea was used for the novel image deep learning evaluation. In the existing deep learning methods, the model is trained with fixed size of the image patches, and it's also tested with the same size of the image patches qualitatively. But in reality, the size of image that needs deep learning is always different. So to test the more general deep learning performance, we need to evaluate the trained model in the train test resolution discrepancy scenario, which means we must test our blurring model with different size of images. So to do this, we train our model with 128 by 128 size image patches and tested it with different size of image patches. Here's our visual results. These are 64 by 64 size image patches in quantitative evaluation, the diffusion model so showed the lowest, lowest performance, but the actual deep learning results were somewhat different. With the resolution discrepancy, the results from baselines were just the reconstruction of the blurry input image. But if we see the results from the diffusion model, it was the most deep learning results compared to others. Slightly though, but if we test this with full size of image, the difference becomes more apparent. The diffusion model outputted the most deep blurred result compared to others. Same for this case. And also we made some interesting observation. It has known that the generating process of the diffusion model occurs gradually during the iterative time steps. This is because of this kind of figure in the previous works. But in the case of diffusion-based deep learning, it was somewhat different. The uninterpretable noise state, something like this, remained almost for 1,600 steps in total 2,000 steps. And the visually perceivable generation process like these occurred only the last 400 steps out of total 2,000 steps. Therefore, to investigate the impact of the, these long noise states, we train the model with different time steps. And here's our visual results. The model trained with 10,000 steps performed some deep blurring, but cannot match the overall image tone. And the model with 400 steps were much worse. By this observation, we could say that the inter uninterpretable noise states were essential for matching the overall image tone and the generation process in the late stage. It's of the time, and this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.
Any question? So um, what, um, the DDPM is your team's uh, invention or is it an existing model? It's existing model, but and we by adding conditional input, the deblur input image, we train these models with whether it can perform the deblurring as well as other tasks. Okay. So it's the main message of this work is uh, the deep learning, uh, the DDPM, the modified version of DDPM can outperform the other baselines like HAN or MIMO or RCAN. Is that correct? And traditionally, the deep learning methods were evaluated with fixed size of images, but we tested it with various size of images to perf to check the general performance deep learning. And it was shown that the diffusion based deep learning could perform more general deep learning as compared to other baselines. I see. Okay. Great. Thanks.